Um, so let's actually go to the PowerPoint presentation and we can have a look. Um, I suppose when you first begin using Metastock, it's like starting any new language. It's going to be foreign to you when you first get started. Uh, but again, once you understand the language, you'll be able to master Metastock and make it easy. Now, just to get a show of hands, how many people here um, currently know how to use Microsoft Excel or have used Excel in the past? Great, a good majority of you. Um, if you can um, code in Excel, I'm telling you now you're going to be um, nine tenths of the way there to, to mastering Metastock. It's based on a very similar language. Obviously, Metastock intertwines a few of its own uh, custom uh, formulas, but once you understand those, you'll have no worries at all. Now, I know we all start at different levels. Some of you, I was talking to you just before we got started, some of you are you know, just getting started with Metastock, while others of you have been using it for five years. I think the best thing is if we go over some of the basics just to make sure we're all on the same page. Once I know we're all on the same page we can build on that and we can look at some of the more advanced features. So to, to break up the Metastock uh, language itself there are three programming language components and they are your data arrays, your mathematical operators and also your Metastock functions. Firstly with your data arrays um, the reason I use the term data array is so when you're looking at uh, Metastock and you're looking at the syntax Metastock uses, when it says data array, you're not confused. Okay? Um, when I'm talking about data arrays at the moment, I'm just talking about these five um, pieces of data that you're all familiar with. You know, it's the supreme pieces of price information. You've got your open, your high, your low, your close, and your volume. And you can simply reference those within Metastock by either writing the word or using the shortcuts.